a man caught a mermaid and put her in an aquarium, but he didn't know that she would turn into a horrible monster. The story begins in an old mansion by the sea. An elderly woman cautiously wanders through the castle, illuminating the way with a kerosene lamp. She notices a puddle on the floor and decides to check what has happened. But suddenly the unfortunate woman is attacked by a frightening creature. Ireland, 1905. The story shifts to a show by a traveling circus of freaks. An elderly man named Mr. Woolrich, upon learning that a mermaid is in the show, walks eagerly into the tent. Angus Shaw, the owner of the circus, inspirationally begins the show and announces the appearance of a real zombie. A tall man appears on stage, diligently impersonating the mad monster. According to the script, the zombie is about to attack Angus, when suddenly an enchanting song is heard from a nearby tent. The spellbound zombie walks toward the sound of the woman's voice, followed by the astonished onlookers. Here they discover a mysterious mermaid, played by Angus' wife named Lily. The show ends. It turns out that Lily was singing from a phonogram, and the zombie wasn't real. The performers count the proceeds and prepare to travel to America, believing that a great future awaits them there. All the audience has long since dispersed, but unexpectedly Lily meets Mr. Woolrich in the tent. He remarks disappointedly that she is no mermaid at all, and accuses the performers of deceit. You're no colossal beast from the sea. Angus is anxious to get the strange man out of the tent as quickly as possible, but Lily suddenly offers Woolrich a ride home. The woman has no idea how this trip will turn out. It turns out that Mr. Woolrich lives in the very old mansion in which a tragedy recently occurred. The man invites Angus and Lily into the house and offers them some drinks. Woolrich tells them that he rarely leaves the house after his wife's accident. The man decides to reveal his big secret to Angus and Lily and tell them about mysterious islands inhabited by mermaids. The actors do not believe him and assume that the old man has completely lost his mind. Woolrich enthusiastically shares various myths about mermaids with his guests. According to him, they lure sailors with their unearthly voice, and at full moon they develop legs instead of a tail. The man shows Angus and Lily a picture of the Queen of the Isles, a mysterious creature that has amazing powers and is a symbol of fertility. The performers are about to leave, and Woolrich realizes that they didn't believe him. He explains that he only came to their show because he expected to see a real mermaid and wanted to warn them of the danger. The old man decides to prove to Angus and Lily that his words are true and invites them to see the remarkable sea creature. That is fantastic. But even after seeing the mysterious creature with their own eyes, they continue to believe it's all just a hoax, and ask Woolrich to reveal the secret of the illusion. Angus tries to find the tube through which the girl breathes, and Lily wonders how well her skin is preserved in the water. However, the man reveals that the creature is very dangerous, and it was the one who attacked his wife. Angus begins to realize that there is a real mermaid in front of him and suggests that the man take her to researchers for study. But Woolrich realizes that the circus man only wants to get his hands on the unique creature for his performances. Throughout the night, Angus cannot sleep and convinces Lily that this mermaid is a great chance to start a new life in America, for they will show people the discovery of the century and become famous throughout the world. After waiting for Lily to fall asleep, Angus, along with his colleagues Bailey and Gifford, sneaks into the Woolrich mansion. The men intend to kidnap the mermaid and take her with them to America, but suddenly the old man appears, once again warning of the creature's danger and forbidding them to take it out of the castle. <laughs> Bailey points a shotgun at the old man, and the fear gives Woolrich a heart attack. The man tries to chase the kidnappers away, but Bailey pushes him away and Woolrich loses consciousness. Angus calms his accomplices and says that the old man's body will not be discovered for a long time, as he rarely leaves his mansion. He shoots the mermaid with a sleeping dart, and the men carry her aboard the ship. Angus informs Lily that he has decided to buy the mermaid, without admitting that he kidnapped her and also accidentally killed the mansion's owner. However, Lily still does not share her husband's optimism and thinks that he should not have bought this strange and dangerous creature. What a bad feeling about this, Angus. Mixed feelings are good. Keeps you balanced. I didn't say mixed, I said bad. Angus and Lily board the ship and leave Ireland. Bailey is in the hole the whole time, keeping an eye on the mysterious prisoner. He tries to feed the mermaid, but she does not eat the potatoes. Suddenly the creature begins to behave strangely, and Bailey realizes that it has sent someone outside the door. He leads Lily to the mermaid, and she calms down. The woman stares mesmerized at the amazing creature and cannot look away. An inexplicable bond is formed between them. The performers dine with Captain Dunn and the other crew members. Lily leaves the men early and returns to the hold. She offers to keep an eye on the mermaid so Bailey can unwind. Lily moves closer to the aquarium and tries to talk to the mermaid, but she does not respond to the woman, only startles her with a sudden touch of her tail. 
Angus and Lily spend another evening with the crew. Lily heads out to rest but is suddenly stopped by a drunken sailor named Miles. He emotionally tells her the story of how he once spent a month in London with Mary Ann, a barren girl of light virtue. He fell in love with her, but one day she ran away, taking all his savings. Lily is uncomfortable listening to this story and is eager to end the conversation as soon as possible. Obviously, Lily is that very Mary Ann. And of course, the sailor immediately recognizes her as his old acquaintance. Lily falls asleep, and at night she is tormented by terrible nightmares. At first, she dreams that the mermaid has taken the life of Angus, which rattles her, and she cries out with rage that it would have been better if the mermaid had attacked Miles. In a subsequent vision, Lily herself becomes a victim of the sea creature as she chews off her wrists. Meanwhile, the mermaid escapes from the aquarium and the sailors find her on the deck, entangled in the nets. Captain Dunn is very angry with Angus, for he did not warn him about the dangerous prisoner. The captain threatens to throw both the mermaid and the other passengers overboard, for he is not going to risk his crew. Angus promises to explain and persuades the sailors to return the creature to the aquarium. He tells Captain Dunn that the creature is the greatest discovery of the century and offers to pay for his help. The sailors inform the captain that Miles has disappeared, but Dunn pays no attention, believing that he is simply resting. The entire crew helps put the mermaid back in the tank. Lily hears a noise and goes down to the hold, where she learns what has happened. When she and the sea creature are alone, the mermaid spits out Miles' ring, and Lily realizes that she ate Miles. Lily decides to tell Angus the whole truth about her past. She confesses that she was not working in London as an actress at all and that she was on the run when they met. Angus assures her that he does not care what Lily was doing before he met her. But Lily goes on and says that Miles was one of her clients. She suggests that the mermaid read her mind and ate the sailor to help her. Angus only laughs in response and thinks this is crazy. Lily asks to let the mermaid out to sea, but Angus is not going to derail his plans because of his wife's fantasies. Lily is left alone in the cabin and accidentally discovers Teresa Woolrich's diary, which Angus stole when he kidnapped the mermaid. From the notes, the woman learns that the mermaid is very old and can control human minds. Lily decides to ask Bailey the truth about the night they brought the mermaid aboard the ship. He assures her that nothing special happened, but Lily realizes that he is lying, realizing that Bailey won't tell her anything. The woman is about to leave, but suddenly she becomes ill. Late at night, Lily demands the truth from Angus. She is very angry with her husband, because he has read Mrs. Woolrich's notes, but pretends that everything is alright and accuses her of being insane. Angus tries to prove that the old folks were just crazy, and that Woolrich himself gave the diary and blessed them. Lily, however, does not believe her husband. She informs him that the notes describe how Teresa kidnapped and fed two people to the creature, and Woolrich has no reason to confess his crimes, so he would never give up the diary of his own free will. Angus gives up and reveals to Lily the truth about the mermaid's abduction. The man admits that the creature is very dangerous, but he is not going to pass up a chance at a better life. He refuses Lily's pleas to let the mermaid go. At night, Captain Dunn descends into the hold and observes the remarkable creature. The man also seems to feel a mysterious connection to the mermaid. Angus and Lily make love, but suddenly Lily begins to behave strangely. The mermaid seems to possess her and takes over the woman's mind and actions. Lily's eyes glow red, and she begins to strangle Angus. The man pushes his aggressive wife away, unable to understand what is happening to her. A frightened Lily comes to her senses and apologizes for her inexplicable behavior. Lily heads to the aquarium and demands that the mermaid stop influencing her. But I want you out of my head and out of my body! Are you listening to me?! The woman is angry that the sea creature is not answering her and is about to leave, but suddenly the mermaid calls her husband's name. Lily warns her to keep her hands off Angus and leave him alone. In the middle of the night, Lily descends into the hold again and waits until Bailey is distracted to retrieve the keys to the handcuffs and release the dangerous creature into the sea. The woman releases the creature from its shackles, but the mermaid is in no hurry to leave the ship. A couple of minutes later, Bailey returns, and the eerie creature attacks him. The entire crew rushes to the poor man's screams, but Bailey can no longer be helped. The mermaid devours him alive. Angus shoots the deranged mermaid with a sleeping dart, but this angers her even more and she lets out a terrifying deafening scream that shatters the windows. After the second shot, the aggressive creature finally loses consciousness. The enraged Angus yells at Lily, for she did not listen to him and decided to let the creature go. The man blames her for Bailey's misfortune. Lily explains to her husband in tears that the mermaid wanted to hurt him, and she had no other choice. Angus decides to lock Lily in her quarters because of her erratic behavior, though she begs him not to. 
The woman spends the day in the cabin and speculates that mermaids lure sailors for sustenance, for they feed only on human flesh. But Lily doesn't understand how their mermaid has lasted an entire year with the Woolricks, eating only three people, and thinks there is something wrong with her. Angus asks her to stop this talk and change the subject, but Lily demands to bring Teresa Woolrich's diary so she can further examine the records of the mysterious creature. Lily doesn't stop reading the diary and suddenly finds a phrase that makes a lot of things clear. Medically impossible unless the Lord has taken matters into his own hand, I'm afraid she's put this in me and I <laughs> Lily becomes nauseous again, and she realizes that she is pregnant despite being infertile. The woman feels like she is starting to go crazy, but she brushes these thoughts aside and convinces herself that she is just acting crazy. In front of the mirror, she rehearses a confession for Angus. She realizes that by all accounts she can't get pregnant, but it somehow miraculously happened. The same thing happened to Teresa Woolrich, and she writes about it in her diary. Meanwhile, the full moon arrives. Lily once again disobeys the prohibition and makes her way out of her quarters and down to the mysterious creature. But then she discovers that the mermaid has transformed into an ordinary girl. Her tail has disappeared, and her legs have appeared in its place. The girl climbed out of the aquarium and huddled frightened in a corner. Lily recalls Mr. Woolrich's words and understands why the mermaid didn't run away when she had the chance. She was waiting for a change. Lily soothes her and covers her with her clothes. Suddenly Angus bursts into the hold with the other men. The sailors want to shoot the mermaid, but Lily begs him not to, and she immediately loses consciousness. The woman wakes up already in bed. She tells Angus that she fainted because she was pregnant. The man does not believe her, because it is impossible, and thinks that Lily is not feeling well because of stress and fatigue. And in the hold, the sailors begin molesting the frightened mermaid girl. Gifford tries to persuade the sailors to stop, for the mermaid is Angus' property. But suddenly Captain Dunn tells Gifford that she is far more dangerous than everyone thinks, and that the entire crew is doomed. He is furious and hits the mermaid, but Angus intervenes. He and Gifford take Captain Dunn away, and the man tells them that the creature has done something terrible to him. Angus is eager to discuss the mermaid's terrible power in more detail, but is distracted for a moment, at which point Captain Dunn shoots himself in the head. A storm approaches. Lily calms the mermaid after the attack. The woman wants to hear confirmation of her pregnancy speculation and tells her that she has always wanted a child, but the mermaid is mysteriously silent. The bad weather intensifies, and the roar of thunder and flashes of lightning frighten Lily. The sailors look out and spot a group of shadows, a group of mysterious islands. But they are sure that there are no such islands anywhere near New York Harbor, and they realize that their ship is off course. Angus runs to the cabin and pulls out Mr. Woolrich's map. The man is horrified to realize that the captain, being under the control of the mermaid, has changed course. The mermaid led them to her home. The sailors try to turn the ship to sail past the islands, but the storm does not allow them to change course. Meanwhile, the mermaid turns from a beautiful girl into a terrifying monster. As she approaches the islands, she reveals her true nature. The sailors hear strange noises, and then the sea monster appears on deck. It attacks two sailors, while the others run off to get weapons and prepare to shoot the monster. However, finishing off the monster is not that easy. Almost the entire crew is already wiped out. Lily explains to Gifford that the creepy monster is the Lair Queen, and she brought them to the islands on purpose in order to feed them to her children. No one has ever made it out of the Lost Isles alive, which is why the mermaids still inhabit the area. Gifford is horrified by what he hears, for Angus had suggested simply transporting the mermaid to America, not kidnapping a man-eating monster. Gifford returns to the deck and wants to shoot the monster himself, but he too fails to survive the fight with the Lair Queen. She now pursues Angus and Lily, the last survivors aboard. Angus says farewell to Lily and apologizes for everything that is happening. The man opens fire on the sea monster, but the wounds have no impact on its strength. He runs out of ammunition, and Angus suffers the fate of all the crew members. Only Lily remains alive. The monster approaches her, but the woman asks not to hurt her and her child, and the monster does stop. The interconnection between them persists even now, despite the mermaid's gruesome metamorphosis. The Lair Queen leaves the ship and returns to her children. Two weeks later, the crew of a passing ship finds the terrified and exhausted Lily. The captain doesn't understand what happened and asks Lily where all the crew is. Subsequently, she is asked many questions about what happened on board, but out of respect for the sea creature, Lily hides the truth. Several years pass, Lily lives peacefully with her daughter, whose eyes, like a mermaid's, glow red. And because the creature left them alive, Lily keeps the terrible secret about everything that happened on the ship. Why do you think the mermaid kept Lily alive? And what do you think the heroine's daughter's future holds? Share your thoughts in the comments, like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next videos.